Department of La Penta. This is WICR. Good afternoon, Iona College. How's everybody feeling today? We're back here live on Tuesday, as we promised last week. Every Tuesday, 4 to 5 p.m. A little late today. We apologize for that delay. But uh, we're coming at you with our sports action either way. Vinny the Donna Sports here, the host of the show, VG Sports. And to my left, I got my co-host, Gio the G-Shocker. So I'm going to let him introduce himself. All right, what's up, guys? Hope you guys are ready for the show. Like we said, sorry for the little delay. Um, before we even start, even though we know you guys are excited to get started on the show, um, we just want to, again, get our social networks out there. Uh, the past show was just recently uploaded on YouTube, so um, on our uh, Iona WICR page. So we're going to get that uh, soon on our own page on YouTube.com slash VG Sports Hub. You guys can go subscribe to us there, follow us there, or on Google Plus as well. We're going to get those out there as much as we can, and we'll expand. Um, but whenever this show is done and then we upload it or is uploaded to our school one, we will upload it to our personal page as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to hit it back to Vinny and we can get this started. Alrighty, guys. So, yeah, as Gio said, try to follow us on those sites. You know, we really want to get out there as much as we can. Uh, hopefully we can pursue our goals in life to uh, hopefully be on the real radio one day. So uh, thank you for your support with that. So uh, now we want to get into... Monday Night Football, last night, we had the Seahawks take on the Redskins. Washington was home. Uh, both teams were well-rested off of this upcoming game. Seattle had a bye week in week four following their overtime victory uh, when they played the Broncos. And then you had Washington, who played on Thursday in week four, losing 45-14 to against the Giants. So they got blown out. Uh, hopefully they wanted to come back tonight with a, a statement. Uh, last night with a statement to be made however it didn't go that way for them losing to Seattle 27 to 17 coming into this game though however Seattle uh, had won eight of their last straight Monday night football games and get this G that was the longest active streak in Monday night football the entire Monday night football wow so uh, the last loss, in, in fact, the last loss that they had in Monday Night Football was in 2004 to the Dallas Cowboys. Then on the other hand, we got the Washington Redskins, who have lost seven of their last eight in Monday Night Football since 2008, and one of 12 since 1998. So you got two lopsided uh, stats there thrown at you. And it turned out to go that way. That, that stat followed in this game. Also, the Redskins had lost nine straight to NFC opponents. This uh, this was also an NFC opponent that they were facing, the Seattle's in NFC. Then we had uh, a big topic in the game was, you know, I like to look into certain things on how deeper than the game itself. And, you know, this stuff sticks out to me. So I came across something here with Deshaun Jackson and Seahawks cornerback. Richard Sherman. They were both friends since childhood, and they still keep in contact till this very day. Uh, they f they trace their friendship back to their old neighborhoods in Compton, California, where they attended school, and both played ironically little league baseball. They were very noted for their baseball skill and play. Actually, Sherman always said that he saw Jackson playing professional baseball because he was so good. He never seen him playing football. They actually, uh, Jackson's father actually coached the two of them for a period of time. So, but this still didn't take away from the competitiveness in the game. However, I do like to look into things like that. So, also a quote here from Sherman on the whole friendship going into the game last night. He says, I will still trash talk to Deshaun. Maybe just a little more friendlier than I am to the other players in the league. So, we know how uh, Richard Sherman is noted and famous for his trash talk around the league but still in this game he still says he's going to trash talk just a little bit more friendly so he wanted to see if he could back that up uh, also another thing uh, after being released by the Philadelphia Eagles back in March uh, many speculated that it was due to Jackson being released tied he uh, they, they thought that Jackson was tied with gang activity here and his friend his buddy Richard Sherman was one of the first people to defend him by writing a column and uh, 
it actually came that uh, it helped him to get back into the NFL and got him back on his feet. So as we said, um, the score of the game was 27-17, Seattle won. Deshaun Jackson had five receptions, 157 yards, a uh, touchdown in there. Russell Wilson also threw for uh, 201 yards, two touchdowns. Also one rushing yard, 122 yards rushing, passing 18 of 24. Then you have Kirk Cousins on the other side, 21 of 36, 283 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, you know, what do you got to say about this game, G? Yeah, well, when we look at it, <clears throat> like you said, um, it pretty much played into the the records we've seen um, consistently with these teams coming into Monday Night Football. I mean, it's a weekly basis, but Seattle coming in and winning their last eight. Redskins have just struggled overall. I mean, they, they have so much con- controversy with RG3, Kirk Cousins. We have an ongoing struggle with their receivers. A lot of people just, you know, um, not healthy on that team. Um, but this, the Seahawks were in control. Like you said, Russell Wilson had a good game. I think he was 18-24, 2-1. and one. He had a couple TDs. He also rushed for so much. He had 11 rushing attempts. It says 122 yards um, and a rushing touchdown. Uh, he would have had so many more if it, was, if it wasn't for flags. I mean, Percy Harvin um, only had 7 yards, but he... Oh, wait, that was rushing. Sorry. He had... Um, three touchdowns taken away from him due to uh, flags. So just imagine the big yardage that both of them would have obtained on those plays. Three touchdowns. That's 21 points. Just imagine those counted. It would have been 48 to 17. So it was pretty much a blowout, even though it seems closer than it was. Um, like I said, Kirk Cousins, uh, 21 for 36. No picks today, but it wasn't it wasn't enough. I mean, Seattle's defense is just so so good. Um, even though Deshaun Jackson was able to uh, be explosive and got 157 yards, uh, just not enough. He was the only one really there doing anything for them. Uh, we saw in the game Pierre Garçon and Richard Sherman getting at each other a little bit. Um, and again, Sherman's not afraid to trash, tra- trash talk. We know that for sure. And he was saying that, you know, Garçon is, again, maybe we can use the word mediocre like he used on Crabtree. Um, but he's just not afraid of anyone. Maybe they got him a little bit, um, but... Like I said, not enough. Definitely Seattle was in control of this game. Yeah, you know, the Percy Harvin thing really stands out to me, how they got three touchdowns taken back. This could have been a totally different game. The Redskins, they aren't a uh, uh, a terrible team. They have, they have. I think Kirk Cousins has what it takes, to be honest with you. I agree. He uh, he hasn't thrown, like you said, no touchdown last night. Um, no also, picks last night. Yeah, uh, no picks, sorry. Uh, he... Um, he really has stepped it up here with the whole RG3 thing. You had RG3 come in, and this was basically this whole entire team was surrounded by him. It was built upon him, and now he's not there anymore. He hasn't been there st- stable, we could say. He hasn't been there stable for the past two seasons. So now Kirk Cousins is going to have to uh, – he's been stepping up. He's been doing the right thing. But as I said, I, as you said also, I don't really think that against this Seattle team – a team that's coming off of um, a well rested, as we said, and and off an overtime victory to the Broncos. This was just, you know, he had it coming to him. Apologize to Kirk Cousins for that, but he had it coming to him, and it showed in the stats and the final score. Yeah, if you let so. me add in something real quick. I mean, when we look at it, um, we had Kirk Cousins. I mean, like you said, the Redskins are a good team overall. Maybe. You know, not the best, but they do have talent. Like I just mentioned, Pierre Garçon is a good receiver. He's not, you know, one of the elite receivers, but he's a really good receiver. They have Alfred Morris, a good running back. They have a solid quarterback. Uh, They can have a better quarterback if they had RG3 healthy and and he proves that he can, you know, play well. But like you said, Cousins has what it takes, and he's proven it with the numbers. Um, But their defense isn't that great. And like I said, they have talent, but you're right. It's just not going to get it done right now. They just have too many... Uh, inexperienced players, maybe some missing pieces on the defense, um, and their offense just isn't clicking. Maybe as time goes on, but, I mean, they're off to a rough start, so who knows where they're going to end up. Seattle's just too good. Right, I agree. And don't forget, you know, they started this season off with RG3, so they exactly. thought he might have been coming back, and now they got Kirk Cousins. He just got thrown into hot water here. So we'll see how it plays out throughout the season, you yep, know. Definitely. And we'll see how the Seahawks continue with their dominance, and we'll see how it all plays out into the uh, playoffs. All right, so that'll do it for Monday Night Football, a quick one game last night in the NFL. When we come back, we're going to talk about 
the MLB. We're going to get into the ALDS. All of the wild card was wrapped up. So we'll have the ALDS we're getting into now. So that'll be next when we come back. So we'll take a short break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 